Hi right, folks, today I'm going to show you how to hatch an annual killifish from Brazil called Opthalomobius uh, bocamani. Now that's a, quite a difficult Latin name to get your tongue, tongue around. Now I will put the spelling below because I don't think I pronounced it correctly. Now when you receive these eggs, don't just chuck them in a bowl of water and expect them to hatch. Um, once they get laid, they've got an expected hatching rate of between four and six months, and they need to be stored at a temperature of 24 to 26 degrees Celsius. Now it's the storing temperature which dictates how quickly the eggs are gonna hatch. Obviously, if they're stored at a cooler temperature, it's gonna take longer for them to hatch, and at a warmer temperature, it's going to be quicker. So when you receive these eggs, you need to roughly estimate um, when these eggs are going to hatch. So because you know they've got a, a four month to a six month incubation period, about a week or so before the four months are up, you need to start raking through the eggs to see if any of them have eyed up. If you see some eggs that have eyed up, you can then place the entire batch, and I stress the entire batch, uh, into a bowl of water. Now, don't try and dig out only the fertilized eggs. Uh, you're gonna do more damage than it's worth. Just place the entire lot in a bowl. And what you do is, after three days, if none of the eggs have hatched, or if they've only partly hatched, what you do is remove the fry that have hatched, and the remaining peat that's in the bowl, you dry it again, and you store it. Uh, you leave it for a couple of weeks and then check again and you will do this until you think you've exhausted the process so the important thing is you need to wet all the eggs in one go and only after some of the fry have hatched approximately about three days do you remove the peat and then dry that and then try again uh, do not try and dig out the eggs and if you've received the eggs from a seller do not try to dig through the peat and count how many eggs you received because once again you're subjecting the eggs to light, you're subjecting them to changing temperatures and you're going to be subjecting them to a change in pH as you rake through the, the peat. So just check that there's some eggs in there and then store them at the correct temperature in the dark. Once you've checked the eggs and you know that some of them have eyed up, you can then go ahead and wet all the eggs. Now I've just had a quick look at the packet and I can clearly see that uh, many of the eggs have eyed up. I've not even had to take the peat out the bag to check this. Some of the eggs are lying up right against the plastic bag and they are clearly eyed up. Now please use some sort of magnifying glass. Um, this was an old camera lens, cleaning lens that I used. Uh, use something powerful at least three, three and a half times uh, magnification because it's sometimes hard to see um, if the eggs have eyed up. Now, this particular species, the eggs are quite small, so do use a magnifying glass to check first that the eggs have eyed up. So, I now know that these eggs have eyed up. I am not going to bother counting them. Um, I know that when I purchased these eggs, there was 50 in the bag. Um, if I try and go through and count 50 eggs, I am going to do damage to some of the eggs and I will lose a few. So I'm just gonna trust that there's approximately 50 in the bag. Um, 50 is more than enough to try and at least get uh, two to three trios of this particular species. Now the eggs of this particular species is quite small. So once they start hatching, uh, you have to have infusoria ready for the first four or five days. Um, now, after about three days of letting the eggs uh, hatch, remove the fry um, from the bowl and then just dry out the peat that's left in the bowl. Now, do not make it very dry and do not leave it soggy. It's gotta be about the consistency of uh, dry tobacco. If it's too dry, the eggs will dry out and if it's too wet, then the eggs will just mold. I know it's difficult to try and understand this, but um, the peat has to be damp, not soaking, not dry. So this is the bag of peat that uh, the eggs came in. 
So I'm gonna pour this whole lot in the dish now and I'm gonna leave them for about three days. Uh, after about three days, you can transfer them to their container. And as I've said, make sure that you've got some infusoria ready. Now remember to check the bag to make sure there's no eggs stuck to the bag. Um, just let this uh, peat sink to the bottom and if there are any dry bits you can just push them down with your finger and let it soak. But I suspect that I will start seeing some fry in the next couple of hours. Okay so this is just an update um, of this particular species. I last made a clip about two weeks ago. Now three days after tipping the peat into their tubs they started hatching. Now I purchased 50 eggs and within three days I had 65 fry emerge from the peat. Now obviously this is a very prolific breeder and the chap I bought it from on eBay gave me a lot more eggs than I had asked for. Now the chap I bought this particular species from is called Hypsila Bias on eBay and he produces some high quality fish. He also sells fancy guppies, some really exotic guppies on eBay. So anyway, yes, I got about 65 fry hatching uh, from this particular batch. So I immediately separated them into two separate containers. The reason for this is if anything happens, then you've got another container to fall back on. Now this particular fry are very, very small. Now in the first few days, I fed them paramecium and baby brine shrimp. Now unfortunately, many of the fry hatching were too small to even take the paramecium, which is quite unusual. So I had to scramble and get some green water which has some infusoria inside it. Fortunately, I keep a lot of infusoria and green water to hand because I breed so many different killifish. Now it only took a day for me to notice that they weren't feeding on the paramecium that I started losing fry. So now of the original 65 fry that hatched, I'm left with 24 healthy fry and I have 12 in each container. They're now large enough to quite happily take the brown shrimp. But this is a valuable lesson when breeding killifish, that no matter what it tells you in the pamphlets or books, what they will eat when they hatch, make sure you've got green water that is filled with infusoria. Now infusoria is a mixture of little critters that is even smaller than paramecium. Now as well as infusoria, make sure that you've got the paramecium to hand as well. Now all of these um, bugs are quite easy to breed in little containers. So if you're serious about breeding killifish, I seriously advise you to have green water, infusoria, paramecium, uh, microworm, baby brine shrimp, all of these things to hand because you never know which one you're gonna need. Now, unfortunately, many of these fry need food within the first few hours or they start dying very, very rapidly. Uh, some species have yolk sacs and others don't. They need food very, very quickly. And even a few hours can mean the difference between having a healthy batch of fry and having half of them die off.